glad you could make the time for us. This is Health and Lifestyle. Hello and welcome. My name is Marie Yambo. As always, to get in touch with us, our social media platforms at Marie Yambo at KBC Channel 1 on X and KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook. Coming up in this program. Jungle Medicine. Nomadic CHPs bridge the gap between health facilities and communities. And how equipped are CHPs to handle health issues? First, who are community health promoters? Well, these are trained members of the community who work as a link between the community and formal health facilities. CHPs play a crucial role in addressing health inequalities by bringing essential health services closer to the people. Well, in Wajia, they literally follow the nomadic community right in the bush. Take a look. When we first arrive in Wajia County, our journey takes us to Wajia North Sub-County, a journey of three hours to Fuller Village. There's hardly any sign of life here, except for herders tending their livestock. The parched land forces this nomadic community to move their animals in search of water and pasture. It also means they move far from health facilities. I've just arrived in Fulo village, a semi-nomadic community in Buna uh, sub-county, that is in Wajia North, where accessing healthcare can be a challenge. Community health promoters like Hussein Osman are bridging the gap. Under the Nomadic Community Health Promoter Project, an initiative of the Save the Children, Hussein has been trained to handle minor ailments. To Angalia, our community, uh, defaulters, immunizations, uh, to uh, treat minor illness. However, referring complicated cases can be a challenge. Shida ni moja. Iyo shida ni wakati sasa wajewazito tuki patika na shida hapo. Iyo shida siza tuwezi, lakini kazi yetu ni kurifa. Hapa ni mali ni badi yetu. Hapuna awa wote waliko wana akona mfugo kuna mtu anakula na akona uwezo ya yani kulipa transport ya kwenda hospitali mama wa jojo sasa tukiwaambiwa muende hospitali uh, sana sana aki uh, blood ikitoka ama kitu yote uh, sisi tuna tunasemama kwa hii barabara almost 2 hours Shida ni transport ya kwe, kwenda huko Buna Health Center. Shida tu ni hiyo tu, lakini hile ni ni minor illness kama homa, fever, ya two days ama three days, tuna treat at home. Most illnesses among children here are related to sanitation. Maji ni wahi, kama una maji, kuna kitu unendele vizuri. Shida tu ni maji hapa. Yeah. Watu wanaenda kushota maji almost 12 km from here. Watu hii uh, nini inaitwa mkokoteni. Inaenda saa 11 asubuhi inarudi saa saba. Eh watoto hata wengine karibu wakufe. Na wanaongoja hiyo hiyo maji kutoka hiyo punda. Kwa sababu mtu kama Hakunawa mkono na anakula tu chokula hivyo. Yeah. Yeah. Tunaogopa, inaleta in, in diseases like in the, like the, the area. Technology, he says, has enhanced the work of reporting data to enhance service delivery. Tell the children, umetusaidia sana. Sai, zamani atuna moral. Sai tukona moral. Tumepatiwa simu, tuna eh, report kila kitu within a seconds. Lakini zamani, tulikuwa tunandika tu register. Register inaenda baada mwezi moja kwa ne, me, eh, eh, huduma mbali ambayo ina, ina, ina hudumua. Sa hii tunareportu, sa hii tukiangalia 
watu ambao wanachukua nini madawa tunaweka saa hii malnutrition wakati ya outreach watu kuna outreach walikuwa wanakuja usaidi wanasaidia hapa tunapima watoto tunaweka kwa simu kile kitu tunaenda within a seconds remuneration of chps has been a contentious issue until recently the national government set aside funds that ensure they received a stipend of 5000 shillings shared equally with the county government they also have support from partners na kila mwezi wanakuja kufanya supervision uh, tunapata 4400 sai tuko na moral uh, kuendelea hii maisha ni mzuri usain takes care of 11 households we learn that part of his household has moved 10 kilometers away a crew navigates the bush the families have settled this is where they'll call home for weeks or even months depending on the availability of water and pasture last week to skia kidogo upande hii kumenyesha kidogo sasa tulitumia pikipiki jana yaangalilie area leo sasa tukahamia mzima tulifika leo hapa kwa jumla yani kwa sababu ya kuleta wanyama kuleta wanyama kwa nyasi pa mali tulikuwa tunakaa imeisha imeisha kidogo so tumetafuta nyasi hakuna uh, mvua mvua imechelewa kwetu so ile ma- mali tunasikia imenyosha kidogo ndio tunakimbisa mpusi na ile kidogo tuko nayo they are assured of medical care with the help of jamila she is the chp attached to them tunatafuta kwa ile mgonjwa kidogo kidogo kama ya kuendesha darea na tumbo tumbo tunasaidiwa na CHP ile ugonjwa ikisidi kidogo naye tunakimbisa mgonjwa hospitali makagufu na pekepeke kama watu mgonjwa napata hapa na kuja Jamila iko wapi iko hapa nachukua dawa dawa yangu ni Panadol na nini ile mtu ile ya tumbo ni tu for cases she can't handle she refers to the Malkagufu health center watu kama na mgonjwa napatia dawa with those who have need urgent interventions at home there so what they do is they link now they link that is the best thing they ever do they link those who are having a maybe a severe illness to the hospital they are the foot soldiers bringing healthcare directly to their communities community health promoters are bridging the gap between the community and health facilities as the sun sets on this grassy plain we set off but this nomadic community rests assured that no matter what the time and place the chps are here to support them community health promoters are crucial to the delivery of the universal health coverage they are the first line in the delivery of health services in what is called the primary health care and so we wanted to know what their impact is in the community on one on the street let's take a listen you know these chvs have already been trained in 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 in, in this and in the use of uh, the medical services and then now they are taking that knowledge in the in, in the in the rural setups they have all the equipments and they can treat the minor diseases that occur in the rural areas chvs largely are the first contact of the community because they are part of the community and before even the child or the sad sick child visits the facility they and they are the, the link between the facility and the community and uh, once we have a good linkage in that we will have a lot when it comes to improving child health because the child need to be brought to the attention of the chp and uh, chb in fact helps especially in the nomadic population where even the the health services or health serving areas the facilities posts are not adequately available that is where it will have a lot of a lot of importance by taking the, referring the child to the clinic following up the pregnant women 
to avoid those uh, pregnancy-related complications. I think we cannot even exhaust the importance of CHPC here today. On that note, we take a break, but when we are back, we want to learn how equipped are these community health promoters to handle issues or health issues for that matter in the community. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, much has been said in as far as the training for CHPs is concerned and whether they are fully equipped to deal with matters of health in the community. The matter of their remuneration has also been a point of discussion. We talked to the CEC for Wajia County and this is what he had to say. Thank you so much, first of all, for allowing us to come to your office and talk to you about the state of health in Wajia County. So let's begin first of all by you painting for us a picture of Wajia County in terms of the health issues that are there. Thank you. I think health, we all know it's 100% devolved, except some technical aspect that is still with the national government. You know, health basic requirements a lot. Basically health is based on building blocks. And for us to change these building blocks, one of the biggest issue, uh, before we are more of a curative. Now things are now moving to more of a preventive services and that's where the challenge is coming from. Uh, naturally, Somali being a, a nomadic community, 60% of its population are in the nomadic setup. That means hard to reach uh, areas are more common. We all know we have close to 300 outreach sites. Close to 300 outreach sites. That means an outreach site is something that has no static health facility. That means that at any given time, uh, when we have to reach these people, we have to use a mobile vehicle or to send a team, a health team and integrated health services has to be provided through an outreach. That's how we do our immunizations, that's how we do our uh, nutritional services, that's how we do our family planning services, even ANC services. So close to 300 are outreach services. So that's the wider perspective. We get 3 point close to 5 billion in this county. 1.8 billion is going to salaries. What remains is 1.7 billion, isn't it? 1.7 billion now, take this close to 100 million, 300 million is going to farm and non-farm, drugs and drug supply. What remains 1.4? Now, again, subtract this. Close to this, close to 100 million is again going to what you call AIs, in terms of AIE to facilities. What you can refer to alone before the FIF is, was implemented, was getting close to 80 million shillings in, in a, no, 60 million shillings in a financial year. Other subcounty households, they're getting close to 30 million shillings in a financial year. That's almost 100 shillings in terms of AIEs. Now, comes to back again to referral services. Referral services is going to almost 100 million shillings. 50 million shillings in terms of AIE, and another 50 or 50 something million shillings in terms of repair and service. You see, what remains now for day-to-day -day operations of programs? We have six programs. Six programs, that is malaria program, which is purely dependent on national government, uh, reproductive health, uh, we have a nutritional program, we have public health as a program at its end, we have a disease surveillance. You see, these programs now require support. You've talked about the number of facilities that you know you've been able to put up and even the number of health workers that you've been able to now can say on board in terms of health giving health services but what is then the role of the community health promoters in as far as health services is con concerned? Uh, community health promoter basically mostly used for what you call linkage of services, linking. You know, when the community is there, the health facility, there, someone has to link. So basically, they're the linkage. How do you link? Through the following aspects. One, they help us through referral services. They are among the community. CHPs, community health promoters, are within the midst of the society. They stay within the community. So whenever they see clients that require an attention, they refer. Who are these clients they are referring? Mother in labor, or mother expected to deliver. And this is normally done through a routine home visit, they normally do it with the help of community health assistants. So it's commendable the work that the community health promoters are doing out in the community. But then there is this perception that they are not adequately trained. What would you say about that? Training 
perception is how you believe on how you understand. You know, in Somali, there's a, there's a word we normally say in Somali, eh? a meat is a piece of cartilage that we, whichever, whichever direction you pull, it moves. So the same perspective. It's an ideology. Why I'm saying this, we all know the literacy capacity of this society. The few who are learned will not stay in the villages. They will opt to look for other jobs. So what we basically do, and actually what we have realized, the best people to use as CHBs are people who within who will remain within the community. And who are these people? Mostly adults, semi-literate adults, who may understand the basics of communication somehow. The best performer CHBs we have are people who never went to class. The best performer among them are the people who never went to class. If you go see their their tap, they have captured a good number of clients. They are the ones who are referring the clients mostly. So the perception is how do you train them? We use the, 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 the normal, what do you call, or the, uh, the, the home or the mother language yeah, to train these people. We translate for them. They do understand Kiswahili, obviously. So the language, Kingereza may not be good, but Kiswahili, they, understand, they do understand. So we, know, we basically break, broke down this language, or so translate them to a language they understand most. And then how do you tailor make them? We have a training manuals for these people. CHP training manuals. If you are training, uh, let's say, MWAC, we'll not train them the, the way I'm training a health worker. We'll cascade them according to their understanding. So basically, we, we, theirs is more of a skill-oriented training than classroom-oriented training. Mm -hmm. It's a more of a mentorship. It's a more of an aspect of doing on-job skill training. They go to the field, two or three mamas, put a mark on the map uh, on the arm. If it reaches yellow, it's an alarm. It's and we are using color coded uh, marks, it's not numbering marks. Eh? It's a color coded mark. If it goes to red, it's dangerous. So once she sees that a red, then obviously it's a dangerous. So what does she do? And by the way, those are the best people to use because they take your word seriously. When they see a red, then it's dangerous. What do they do? take them to facility. You understand? So you, TBS, the majority of some of the CHPs are also TBS, that former who have, been, who have been used as TBS. So when they see a client who is in labor and they understand better, the traditional birth attendants understand better uh, delivery systems. So when they see a mother is in client, then they will come with her to the facility. My cue, these people are earning something from us. They are getting stipend from the department. So there is the Community Health Services Bill. That is what it is. It's currently, is it at the county? Uh, it's still at the drafting stage. So there's also a feeling that it's moving a little bit slower, but we could explain to us where it is and what you hope to achieve with the enactment of this particular bill. Thank you. I think uh, as a county government, they did a uh, marvelous job in terms of health bills. So far, we have the governor sent it to a bill, a facility improvement financing bill. That will going to be tied again with community health service bill. Why am I first putting the facility improvement fund bill? Remember, a junk of the money the county government receives goes to the Department of Health. If these facilities, facilities do have a funding me methodology or mechanism, then they will, the department will have monies that they can use for other activities like CH, uh, community health promotions. So that's why Health Financing Bill first was enacted and now it's functional and facilities are going to use those monies of, for themselves. Let's come to uh, CH, CHS Bill. So far it's in pro good progress. Even as we speak now, there's a workshop going on where the health committee and the health technical committee are drafting the bill. Once this bill is drafted, then it will be taken to the cabinet for approval, of which His Excellency is actually pushing us to fast track this bill. So far, we are paying a stipend, 2,500 per month from the county and 2,500 from the national government. So far, we have paid uh, the previous month and currently, as we speak, their check is almost been assented to by the, the chief officer. Mm -hmm. and maybe in the next two weeks or three weeks, they will be paid uh, the few months remaining. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the much we have gone with it. Mm -hmm. 
and they're actually motivated. That's why they're doing this job. If you go to the field, you will see uh, how motivated these people are. The community health promoters are out there in the communities trying to help the community members or their households for that matter. But another challenge that we came across is when there's an emergency or when they go to the community but you know they find a situation that they cannot handle and they have to bring them to the health facilities. But the issue now is transport. Sometimes they say they might have to even dig into their own pockets to ensure that this um, you know, sick member of the community is taken to hospital. How do you plan to help or to mitigate that? Actually, uh, we wanted to approach things from the nomadic health perspective. You know, one time we had what we call nomadic health uh, approach where a CHV normally goes with the community that, that's mobile. If they are moving, you know, we all know that these are nomadic society. They move from one place to another looking for pasture. So the wider concept was to have a CHV, CHV among, them, among, them, among these people. One thing that's very good in terms of referral this county has done is if something they have done good is referral services. Uh, our referral services are very free. We don't charge any clients. The only thing is they communicate to the referral center. There's a hotline that they normally communicate through our facilities. If we ascertain through the CHB that a mother has a complicated labor, then our facility, our vehicle normally moves to that place. The future of community health promoters or community health work for that matter in as far as health is concerned, where do you see that? I believe the approach we are using, if we strengthen it, then we will have a better achievement in terms of outbreaks uh, and approach in terms of uh, uh, preventive health services. Preventive health, I think the concept should be prevention should be better, should be, is better than cure, uh, cure. I think the concept should be that way. How, if we put preventive services in place, a good example is that CLTS, community-led sanitation. And, and the partners, you just mentioned partners, how crucial are they in terms of supporting health services in the county? Let me appreciate our, our able partners who have been helping us a lot. Without them, we would not have done something. Today, as we speak, we are having a CHS bill, courtesy of Save the Children. Courtesy of. Today, as we speak, we have a wash training, courtesy of UNICEF. You see, today, as we speak, as we speak, there's an outreach going on, courtesy of WASDA, courtesy of Save the Children. You, you, you see that now we are saying without that support, these indicators we are talking about will not have achieved. So we cannot take this for granted. So thank you so much again for taking your time to explain to us, you know, how the community health promoters are supporting health services right from the communities to the health facilities and also in terms of uh, talking to us about the environmental impact, you know, that climate change has in terms of health and children's health for that matter. <music> We've come to the end of the program. We are glad you could make the time to watch the program. And remember, you can always catch this program on our YouTube channel. And so on behalf of everyone who made this program possible, we want to thank you for your time. My name is Marie Yambo and hope to see you again next time.